Good evening, everyone, and welcome to School and Hall. The theme for tonight's service is appreciation. Let's begin with the prayer of the day. God of unchangeable power, you have revealed yourself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Keep us firm in this faith, that we may praise and bless your holy name. For you are one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The angels of God guard us through the night. The, of the, the Spirit of God be our guide. It is but lost labor that we haste to rise up early and so late take rest, and eat the bread of anxiety. For those beloved of God are given gifts, even while they sleep. My brothers and sisters, our help is in the name of eternal God. Dear God, thank you for all that is good, for our creation and our humanity, for the stewardship you have given us of this planet Earth, for the gifts of life and of one another, for your love which is unbound and eternal. O oh God, most holy and beloved, my companion, my guide upon the way, my bright evening star, we repent the wrongs we have done. We have wounded your love. We stumble in the darkness. We forget that we are your home. Eternal Spirit, living God, in whom we live and move and have our being. All that we are, have been, and shall be is known to you, to the very secret of our hearts and all that rises to trouble us. Living flame, burn into us. Cleansing wind, blow through us. Fountain of water, well up within us, that we may love and praise in deed and in truth. Eternal Spirit, flow through our being and open our lips. Let us worship the God of love. Please stand for the first hymn. Tonight's Bible reading is from Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. Jesus heals ten men with leprosy. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. 
As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Here ends the reading. Tonight's theme of the service is appreciation. Life can be tough, can't it? We all face challenges and stresses that can sometimes be overwhelming, whether it be the loss of a loved one or disappointment or the daily grind that leaves us feeling exhausted. These experiences are part of the human journey. Many of us face unprecedented challenges, be it through global events that shake our sense of security or personal struggles that test our resilience. These moments of hardship can feel us isolated and weary, but they also remind us of our shared humanity and the strength we have in one another. Naturally, it is easy to overlook the blessings that we have, yet in these moments of difficulty, and it is appreciation that becomes most powerful. Today, I want to talk about appreciation, and not it being as a fleeting feeling, but as a profound and transformative practice. It is about recognizing this value in people and moments that make up our, our lives, even when things are tough. Appreciation can shift our perspective, lighten our burdens, and bring us closer to God and each other. So let us explore how we can cultivate a heart of gratitude and experience the peace it brings. We've acknowledged the challenges we face and importance of appreciation during such times, but what exactly is appreciation? Let's take a moment to define it. Appreciation is more than just saying, thank you. It is a deep recognition of the values and blessings in our lives. It involves the awareness and acknowledgement of the goodness around us, no matter how small. When we appreciate, we open our hearts and minds to the positive aspects in our lives, which can often be overshadowed shadowed by our daily struggles and worries. In the Bible, we see numerous examples of appreciation and gratitude. One of the most striking stories is that of the 10 lepers in Luke 17, verses 11 to 19. Jesus heals more than 10 men suffering from leprosy, a condition that has isolated them from their community and society. However, only one returns to Jesus to thank him. This man, a Samaritan, falls at Jesus' feet, praising God for the goodness and healing. And Jesus asks, were not all 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? Jesus was amazed that only one came back to give thanks. Which group will we fall into? Paul, too, writes in his letters to early churches and often begins by saying thanks. In Philippians 1, verses 3 to 6, he writes, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I will always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. He reminds us that gratitude should be a fundamental part of our spiritual lives, helping us to foster communities and strengthen our faith. While appreciating our blessings is crucial, it's equally important to acknowledge and validate our struggles. In today's world, it's common to hear phrases like, it could always be worse, or that's just a first world problem. These comments, though often well-intentioned, can be incredibly dismissive and harmful. They suggest that our problems are insignificant and that we have no right to feel the way we do. This mindset is a negative way to approach appreciation. It minimizes the struggles that people face and prevents them from addressing their issues. If we constantly told everyone that their problems could be worse, no one would ever feel empowered to confront and resolve their difficulties. 
It creates a culture where people feel they must suppress their emotions and experiences, leading to further isolation and distress. Although people in other countries may experience terrible events, we still need to look after each other throughout our own individual life journeys, no matter how small our problems may seem. True appreciation involves empathy and support for one another. It means acknowledging each other's struggles and offering a helping hand, regardless of the scale of the problem. If we always dismiss problems by saying it could be worse, we'd create an environment where no one ever addresses their issues. The modern term for this is toxic positivity, and many may consider it to be even worse than saying nothing at all. This approach prevents growth, healing, and genuine connection. Instead, we should encourage a mindset where people feel safe to share their burdens and seek support. As a community, we are called to bear one another's burdens. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2 says, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. By validating each other's experiences and offering support, we foster a spirit of genuine appreciation and compassion. This approach helps us build stronger, more connected communities where everyone feels valued and cared for. Now that we've explored what appreciation is and the importance of acknowledging each other's struggles, let's look at the science of appreciation and the incredible impact it can have on our lives. Did you know that appreciation and compliments can actually improve performance? A scientific study published in the Frontiers in Psychology Journal showed that high school athletes who receive compliments while doing the beep test increased their speeds by greater amounts than those students who did not receive compliments. That's right, compliments can actually make you run faster. They are that powerful. Another fascinating study from Essex Business School examined the effects of compliments in the workplace. The study found that employees who complimented their boss had a 68% greater chance of receiving a promotion than those who did not. It's amazing to think that a simple act of kindness and recognition can significantly influence professional success. However, appreciation doesn't have to be formal or serious all the time. In fact, adding a bit of fun and genuine wit to compliments can make them more memorable and impactful. Here are a couple of lighthearted examples. You are cooler than a secret handshake. You are so charismatic, you could be the leader of a cult. Of course, you might be able to think of better compliments than me. But the point is to make your compliments genuine and thoughtful. These playful compliments not only bring a smile to someone's face, but also show that you've put thought and creativity into your words. Genuine and thoughtful appreciation can strengthen relationships, build trust, and create a positive environment, whether it's at home, at work, or in our community. So, Let's go out into the world and make it a habit to appreciate the people around us. Whether it's a heartfelt thank you, a word of encouragement, or a funny compliment, let's spread appreciation and watch how it transforms our lives and the lives of those surrounding us. Now, let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude. Thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us, both seen and unseen. In the midst of our struggles and challenges, help us to remember your constant presence and unfailing love. Open our eyes to the beauty and grace that surround us each day, and teach us to appreciate the simple joys and the acts of kindness we often take for granted. Grant us the wisdom to recognize the blessings in our lives, and the humility to express our gratitude to you and to those around us. Fill our hearts with your peace and joy, and guide us to live each day with a spirit of thankfulness. May our appreciation for your gifts deepen our faith and strengthen our relationships with one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Time for silent prayer and reflection. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray together in English. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I will lie down in peace and take my rest. Let us bless the earth maker, the pain bearer, the life giver. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness, of the world, and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us, and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. So, good evening all, and I'd just like to show my appreciation, hopefully yours too, as we... Next slide, please. Just uh, appreciate what Schoolhouse have gifted to us tonight. A great theme, and really well delivered, and very carefully constructed, and uh, well presented by William, and particularly you, Lee Hang, as well, and a little bit of difficulty there at times as well. But thank you for that. Thank you for your words and your messaging tonight. I'm totally on point and really valuable for us as well and also assisted by Liam of course and Ben and and Ryan and the team I think that's everybody in your group this evening so round of applause for Schoolhouse please thank you boys <laughs> awesome great stuff and I'm just going to hand over to Mr De Beer he wants to grab the lectern yeah, look, I just thought I'd uh, take this moment uh, this is the last time in this chapel space for Rev before he heads off on sabbatical um, and we thought it would be appropriate uh, if we just bow our heads in a karakia as we, I guess, bless this time and um, pray for Rev as he is heading off overseas soon. So please bow your heads in prayer. Father, you go before us and you're behind us. We thank you for what you have put on Rev's heart. We pray for your blessing, your provision, your guidance, that he can see your work and help do your work. And in so doing, return with things to encourage us, to strengthen us, and to further our journey as St. Paul's. In Jesus' name, amen. Very appropriate topic, appreciation. One of the difficult things about when you're so involved in a place and the work here is to sort of leave it behind you and lay it down for a season, but what gives me such a lovely sense of appreciation is the fact I'm going to leave it in the hands of Mr. De Beer. It's going to be well supported by the senior leadership team and, and others as well. So I'm very grateful to you, Mr. De Beer, for enabling me to be able to go overseas for this amount of time and knowing that everything's going to be even better than it was when I left it when I get back again. So thank you so much and thank you again to the schoolhouse this evening. So I invite you to please stand. It's an opportunity now for us to share Te Langa Māori Atua, the peace of God amongst ourselves. Feels like it's been some time since we were in chapel on a Sunday night. And obviously there's a few things to work on in how we conduct ourselves on a Sunday evening. But this is a really special part of Sunday Karakia, an opportunity to share that deep shalom of God, the Rangamari at peace amongst ourselves, an opportunity for us as a residential community, particularly and also joined by Hall and Schoolhouse tonight to share that peace with a handshake normally, and also an opportunity perhaps to make an apology if we need to make one or to receive one as well and have the grace to do that. So without further ado, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share with one another a sign of God's peace, with the words, peace be with you, and a handshake. <clears throat>
What's the next one? Oh, there okay. we go. Just got that. Okay, thank you. Nice and still now. <clears throat> nice and still. Thank you, Jordan, for uh, praise my soul, the King of Heaven. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us conclude our service by saying together the words of St. Paul's Grace in Tadeo in English. Kia to, kia tato katoa, te atwha te tato riki, ayu karati, me te aroha o te atwha. Me te whiwhinga tangitanga, ki te wairo tapu, a ke, a ke, a ke, amene. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve one another in Christ. Go in peace, thanks be to God. Ke kaha, ke hari, ke tapu, be strong, be happy, be holy. Amen.